Welcome back. This is part two of executing calculations for the hypothesis test for chi-squared. In the last video, we talked about the formula for chi-squared and also how to calculate degrees of freedom. If you haven't watched that first, I recommend that you go back and watch that one as this is going to build off of those ideas. So in the last video, when we talked about the chi-squared, I showed you the distribution and I said, this is going to have a right skew to it because the chi-squared, because it's squared, has to always be positive. So it's going to start at zero instead of being centered at zero. Now, technically what happens with the chi-squared is it can, it's going to give you a location on this curve. So the chi-square is some number that you're going to find, and it's going to be a location on this chi-square distribution, which remember these distributions change depending on degrees of freedom. So we'll have different distribution shapes based on the degrees of freedom. But the chi-square gives you a location on the curve. So that's the start of it. Now, the measurement that we're talking about in today's video is something called a p-value. Now, a p-value is the probability of founding what you did from the sample or something more extreme, assuming that the null hypothesis is true. That's a lot, right? So if you remember, the formula is observed minus expected squared divided by the expected, and you do that for each cell. Now, if you also remember, this is going to be a lot of thought process, but if you also remember, the expected count is what we expect to see if there is no relationship or no association. So that means observed minus expected. If those numbers are really close together, that means that we're not seeing an actual relationship in the observed values or in the actual data. So that also means that if those differences are really small and they're really close together, we're going to end up seeing a chi-square that's close to zero. So no association or no relationship, we're going to expect to see a chi-square close to zero. All right, that's the first part. Second part, I said a p-value is going to be the probability of finding what you did or something more extreme. Now, we already said that the not extreme or the no relationship is going to be close to zero. So that means for these problems, the more extreme is always going to be the area to the right of chi-squared. Now, the other thing, a p-value is the probability. Now, with these curves, area equates to probability. So that means this is the area or probability we're interested in when we're looking for our p-value. So essentially the p-value is the area underneath the curve that is to the right of the chi-squared. Now a probability also, if you remember way back from the math you took years ago, has to be between zero and one. So for these curves, the p-value is an area it's the area to the right of the chi-squared, and it is, has to be between zero and one. Now, you can see that this is a pretty big area, right? And I know that here I'm close to chi-squared, or excuse me, chi-squared is close to zero, so a large p-value is probably indicating no relationship or association. Because this chi-square is so close to zero, that's going to include a lot of area. So here, it's going to tell you kind of how to make a decision uh, using that p-value for your hypothesis test. Now, if you remember all the way back to the f portion of FRED, we wrote out what's called a null and alternative. Now, in this portion of executing the calculations, we found a chi-square. The chi-square gave us an area or a probability connected to it. That's what we call the p-value. Now, the last portion of the execute calculations is making a decision. Now, in hypothesis testing, when you make a decision, you make a decision on the null hypothesis because essentially you want to see if there's enough evidence to go against that or to go against saying that there is no relationship. Is there enough evidence in favor of the alternative? So when we do a hypothesis test, we have two options. Just like there's two hypotheses, we have two possible decisions. One is to reject the null, and the other is failing to reject the null. So notice we're making a decision on the null. So in these, when we find a p-value, we're seeing how much evidence we have for what we found or something more extreme. And remember, the more extreme is in favor of the alternative or more of a relationship. So these are the two options. We never accept 
the no. I know that this terminology, fail to reject, that might really grind you the wrong way. But essentially, when you do these hypothesis tests, you're not doing it to prove that the null is true. And using the term accept the null makes it seem like we have proof of the null being true. That's not how a hypothesis test is done. You're doing it to see if there's enough evidence to go um, to oppose the null in favor of the alternative. So our two decisions are rejecting the null or failing to reject the null because when we do the hypothesis test, we're not doing it trying to prove that the null is true, hence fail to reject. If that idea uh, escapes you, which it sometimes escapes me, just think that accept is a swear word. And don't use it. That's it. All right. So when we talk about reject the null, we know definitively if we have a small p-value, so in the 0 to 0 0.1 range, we're going to make a decision to reject the null. We also know that if we have a large p-value, we're going to be in this area right here, and that's going to be failing to reject the null, so something that has a lot of area in it. Here, when we're in this area, we're going to need to compare to this measurement called alpha or the level of significance. Now, if you're looking at this video thinking about how it relates to um, an introductory statistics class, often you will be told when you're doing a problem what alpha is going to be or what the level of significance is. If you're not, different disciplines use different alphas that are fairly consistent, or the majority of the time, it's 0 0.05. So if people forget to tell you, or if you're not sure what to use, 0 0.05 is a good one. So when you have a situation that the p-value is less than alpha, you reject the null. When you have a p-value that is not less than alpha, you make the decision fail to reject the null. And in future videos, I'm gonna really emphasize how to look at a p-value and make the decision to reject or fail to reject. But for right now, that's what it is, and that's the decision, and that's the last portion of executing calculations for a chi-squared. And in future videos, I'll talk about this in a little bit more detail. See you there.